Welcome to Vacation Bible School. I am so thrilled to welcome you. My name is Mr. Brandon, and I am the youth group director here at Trinity Bible Church. And I'm with my good friend, Aiden. And we're so happy to welcome you to the most incredible place on earth. You know where that is, Aiden? Where? It is here at the Incredible World Amusement Park. It's so awesome. Do you like amusement parks? Yeah. Man, I love amusement parks. You know one of the things I love about amusement parks, Aiden? What? Roller coasters. Do you like roller coasters? Oh, I love roller coasters. Roller coasters are so awesome. Except I was afraid to get on one until I was 13 years old. And I had to ride it with my mom because I was scared of heights. What's your favorite roller coaster, Aiden? Oh, I like all roller coasters, but especially the ones at Carowinds. Man, that's such an awesome place to ride things that go at incredible speeds and you go, ah, oh, whoo. I have to remember to take off my glasses. I get way too excited. But you know what is even more exciting than roller coasters, even though roller coasters are awesome, is the incredible creation that God has given to us. We have incredible things like volcanoes and hurricanes and high mountains and deep seas, and they have incredible animals all throughout. I'm excited this week that we're going to talk about our incredible creation and what God has done. Are you excited? Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah. Isn't this more exciting than any kind of amusement park? Yes. I, you better believe that. I can't wait to see what we've got. Let's get started and see what happens. Hello everyone and welcome to Incredible World. I'm Toad Kaz and let's get ready for our extreme adventure. Alright guys, can you think of what the word extreme means? We are at an amusement park, does that give you any hints? Hmm, let's think. I'm thinking of a roller coaster, maybe a water slide. Those things can be extreme. Did you know that God created some pretty extreme creatures as well? I'm gonna take you on an adventure through God's creation and show you some of his extreme creation. Alrighty guys, the first creature on our list is called a tiger beetle. These guys, they aren't that big, but they are incredibly fast. I'm talking like six miles per hour. Wait a second, that's not that fast. I could probably run six miles per hour, but because this insect is so tiny, it would be like me running 500 miles per hour. That's like a jet plane. I was that size, there is no way I could come close to six miles per hour. But God designed these creatures to avoid these predators and keep them safe. Now I think that is just crazy extreme. Let's go to the next creature on our list. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint. Can you think of any creature that has maybe 200, 300 legs? It's a millipede. That's a lot of legs. That many legs, it's just extremely crazy. But that's not the only crazy and extreme thing about these creatures. Did you know when they get scared or a predator comes up to sneak up on them to maybe eat them, they curl up in a little ball to hide and they release this really weird chemical that irritates and scares off the predator and it helps protect them and so that they can go on their normal life. Now that is a pretty extreme creature. All right guys, here's our next creature on the list. It's a gecko. Now we have geckos around here in Greenville and they can run on the walls, they can run on your ceilings, they can pretty much hang upside down and go wherever they want. They're kind of like Spider-Man. Now what's really extreme about them is they have special feet. I couldn't just go walk on the wall or walk on the ceiling. These geckos have really, really tiny little hairs on their feet that act like suction cups. That is extremely cool. Next animal is the T-Rex. The T-Rex is 40 feet long and 20 feet tall. To put that in perspective, that's four basketball hoops put in a line and two basketball hoops on top of each other. That's crazy, that's huge. If I saw one of these T-Rexes in my backyard, I'd be running and hiding. 
They are pretty extreme animals. I hope you guys enjoyed all of these extreme animals that God created, and we'll see you next time. Now it's time for our song. I can't wait to sing along. Now it's time for our lesson with Mr. Creighton. Did you know that there was a time when there was no time? Back a long, long time ago, before everything was made, there was only God. God the Father, His Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. They had been existing forever, but nothing else had been created yet. God tells us in His Word in Genesis 1-1 that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was God that made it all, right away. Those are the very first words of the Bible. Right away, God tells us that He created the heavens and the earth. You'll hear some people say that the earth was created in a giant explosion many, many billions of years ago. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that God made the heavens and the earth. And we can study that out from the dates in the Bible that that happened about 6,000 years ago. And we know from God's Word that He created everything in just six days. That's not a lot of time. Do you think that was hard for God to make everything in just six days? No, we know from God's word that nothing is too hard for God. God truly is incredible. Next, the Bible tells us that when God made everything, the earth was without form and void. Without form means that it doesn't have any shape. It's kind of like water. Water doesn't have any shape. It takes whatever shape it's, it's put into, but it doesn't have any shape by itself. It also says, that the earth was void. There was no plants, there was no animals, there was nothing. Then God began his creation. It says in Genesis 1-2, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now this light that God made wasn't the sun yet. That comes a little bit later. This was just light. And he says that the evening and the morning were the very first day. He also created a sky in the middle of the waters. The Bible calls it the firmament in some places. I'm glad God made the sky. That's where the air is. That air is what we breathe every single day. God called this sky heaven. The evening and the morning were the second day. On the third day, creation, God created something brand new. He took all the water and he brought up land out from the water. God said all the waters would be gathered in one place and for the dry land to appear. And that's what happened. God called this dry land earth. The waters he called seas. God made all of these things and God saw, and this is very important, that it was very good. God saw that what he made was good. Then God said for the earth to bring forth grass on the land. Grass and herbs and plants and trees that yield seed. And it's very important, it says that they yielded seed after their kind. Did you hear what that word kind means? According to kind, as it says in Genesis 1, is a very important phrase here over and over and over again. This means that every single plant or animal reproduces after its kind. It makes more of its kind. One kind of animal or plant never changes into another. 
For example, a, a strawberry plant can never turn into an orange tree, and a dog can never have baby kittens. They reproduce after their own kind. Dogs will always have baby dogs, and cats will always have baby cats. There are all kinds of dogs. There's small dogs, big dogs, wolves, coyotes, all kinds of things. Um, but they're all part of the same big kind, the dog kind. They won't change over time. They will always be the dog kind. When God made these grasses and plants and trees, he said that they were good. And that was the evening and the morning, the third day. Now we're at day four. And on day four, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. He also made the planets at that time. It isn't a problem at all for God to make the sun, the moon, and the stars later uh, because that's how he chose to create things. The plants had light to produce energy and God made them the way that he chose to. God is in control of the order and the way that he makes things. It says in the Bible that that day was the fourth day and what God made was very, very good. Then comes day five and God made on day five great sea creatures and fish and birds that fly in the air. All of them again, according to their kind. God saw that it was good. These are the very first animals. Animals like dolphins, like parakeets, like all kinds of interesting animals. God made those animals to do exactly what they do best. How about an example of a, an animal that God made that flies? Have you ever heard of a woodpecker? There's a woodpecker right there. Woodpeckers are fascinating. They peck holes in trees, but they don't get wood chips in their face. They have feathers that protect their face to keep them from getting wood chips. God designed them that way. Um, they also have a cushion in their heads that prevent them from getting a headache every time they go and peck holes in trees. That's amazing. God made the woodpecker so that the woodpecker could peck wood in the best way that he possibly could. God is a master designer. God knew exactly what he was doing when he made these animals. He said it was very, very good. That was the fifth day of creation. Now we come to the last day of creation, the sixth day of creation. And this day of creation is when God made all other living things, living things that crawl on the ground, living things that eat the grass of the field. And most importantly, on that sixth day, God made people. Those people were the very most important creation that God made. It says in scripture that God made man in his own image. And he gave man some rules. He gave man some instructions. One of those rules was not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. One of those instructions was for man to be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over the earth. Dominion is very important. Uh, for example, how many of you have a dog or a cat? Is that dog or cat in charge of you? I don't think so. That dog or cat is under your control. You could say that they are under your dominion. When God gave man and woman dominion over the earth, he commanded man to control and to protect it. And so as a result, when we see things out on the earth, we need to take care of them. We need to take care of the earth that God has given us. He gave it to us to use it. We must use it wisely. We must use it well. That's because we are God's special creation. God gave us that job to take care of his creation. So that's what we do in obeying God's command. Six days had gone by. Now we come to the seventh day, the end of one whole week. It says in scripture that God was finished with his creation. And when God finished, he rested from his creation. This is very important. Can you say the seven days of the week? Let's say them real fast together. We've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Seven days of the week. On the seventh day, God rested. Have you ever wondered why we have a seven-day week? There's nothing in nature that says we have to have a seven-day week. But everyone on the planet for many, 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 many years have all had that same seven-day week. Where did it come from? It came from God's creation. When God created, God set up that seven-day week for us to use. There's no other reason that it would be divided up by seven days across the whole world, especially if the world was created over millions and millions of years. It's been that way because God created it that way. How do you like that? God made the whole earth and all the plants and animals and people in just six days, not very long ago. Isn't God incredible? Have you seen Aiden? He was supposed to buy me dinner. Oh well, it's time to sing our song.
Well, it's been a great day at Vacation Bible School. I think we've learned a lot today. We learned today that in the beginning, God created everything. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. That's better than any roller coaster I've ever ridden. And I didn't need to hold my mom's hand today when I was learning about the Bible. Isn't that a blessing? <laughs> it is. Man, I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow night. I hope you're as excited to see what we're going to learn about for the rest of this week. Are you going to be back with me tomorrow night, Amy? Oh, yeah. Awesome. I'll see you guys then. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. If you'd like to learn more about Trinity Bible Church and what we believe about the gospel and Jesus Christ and what it means to be a follower of Jesus, check out this link below.